In this video, my goal is to sell you on the boring meeting. Hi, my name's Zach. I'm a recovering man child and I am an invisible labor educator for men. If you've probably found me on either Instagram, TikTok, or Facebook first, one of the things that I talk about all the time is the boring meeting. I am a coach. I work directly with men to help them understand and implement mental load, invisible labor, emotional labor, etc. And one of the huge tools that I use to do that is the boring meeting. And so I wanted to share with you a couple of the pieces of it that a lot of the common questions I've been getting recently in the DMs, in email, um, that I think will help sell it a little bit better and help people implement it for those that, that aren't can't afford coaching or really wanna implement themselves and they don't need the accountability of someone outside of them. So first off, what is the boring meeting? So the boring meeting is an, is an opportunity for you to talk about important things proactively and iteratively. So a lot of times when tough conversations are being had, hey, you didn't do the dishes fully. What do you mean? Yeah, I did the dishes fully. We're having those opportunity conversations about like, hey, you know, last week, you know, you said you did the dishes, but you didn't. Can we talk a little bit about like the minimum standard of care of dishes? Um, and furthermore, I'm gonna use some language that comes up in the fair play book often. One of them is minimum standard of care. So when we're talking about minimum standard of care, for example, dishes in our home, uh, that got discussed in a boring meeting. So it means all the dishes are in the dishwasher. It means the sink, all the little gunk and the food that got caught gets thrown in the trash. Um, ideally, not ideally, part of the minimum standard is that give it a quick scrub and all the counter space that's open, uh, there's not something that's like camping on there for a little bit, um, has been wiped with a disinfectant like Lysol wipe. So in our house, that is what the minimum standard of care is. If there were an, I own that a hundred percent. If there were a night or a week or something, let's say I was injured, sick away from the home, that is the standard of care that I would expect Alyssa to pick up. And you know, someday when our toddler is old enough, that will be something that will be expected of them if they end up taking on that chore. So. We're talking about those sort of things and the goal is to talk about the things that are consistently causing problems. Recently, so Alyssa and I work full time. We have daycare Monday through Thursday. On Fridays, either my parents or her parents come over to babysit. They typically get here somewhere after 11 o'clock, maybe sometimes 10 o'clock if we're lucky. And what kept happening was meetings get were being put on my calendar for before noon. And we kept being in limbo, like, okay, do you get childcare? Do I get childcare? I got a meeting at this time. Can you get till then that? And it kept being an issue, but not enough of an issue to talk about until the past two weeks. There was an issue in the morning and then there was one in the afternoon because one of our one of our parents left early and we weren't expecting that. And so the, the person that had to jump in, so I had to jump in and Alyssa and I didn't really communicate, so I was kind of annoyed that it was just pushed on me rather than communicated about. So what we recognized is we needed to talk about it. It was something that comes up in the moment, but you know we're not thinking about it Saturday, we're not thinking about it Sunday, we're not thinking about it any other day of the week other than right when it's happening on Friday. So right after it happened, I put it on, we have a rolling Google Doc that we have for our boring meeting. I put it on there directly and made sure that that was something we got brought up. The solution we came to was on Friday mornings, I'm accountable from wake up until the point in time which our babysitters get here. And in the afternoon, once our babysitters are here, uh, it's her responsibility as childcare till about six o'clock and then I'm expected to, to join the family for whatever. And I, people can't schedule things with me and I have a time block from about nine to 12-ish. So, those are some of the things that get talked about that are either proactive or iterative that are important, but not always urgent. Number two, why do we call it the boring meeting? So the, the name is kind of coined from Alyssa. She came up with that. I think it was honestly that she felt like it was sort of a self-aware name. One time I think she called it oh, the boring meeting. Uh, and I, we're calling it the operations meeting or the expectations meeting and I think the value of that is if we if we call it the the expectations meeting or the operations meeting there's a level of seriousness that I think we have to like almost fake 
to, to get there at all. We're going to talk about operations like it's our house. It's not a business, but it kind of is a business. And I think a lot of houses are, are existing to survive, but not existing to thrive. And so I think the boring meeting, it's almost like a pithy way of looking at, hey, you know, this is a family like, you know, we're we're trying to have goals. We, we have a life that we want to live. We're not just like existing and surviving. Um, and these are some of the boring things that we need to talk about to get to some of those things. I think for people that have a hard time taking goals seriously, taking, wanting to, to get out there, I think they need sort of a self-reflective, I guess these are boring things, but like they're important. And so it like calls out that concern that we have. And I know a couple of my clients have said that bring that to their partners like well this is all the stuff that you know the, the woman's reacting and saying well this is all the stuff that I always talk about why are we calling it boring and they feel like it's an attack on them and so it's it's interesting and, it's, and that's a good opportunity to reflect like hey it's not it might feel boring but like it's important the boring title is not necessary but uh it's just what we've been using and it's it seems to turn heads a little bit because it's it's kind of oddly named so operations uh expectations or two others that we've heard use whatever works for you third one is i want to give three reasons why it works and i think there's probably a handful more reasons that i'm continuing to uncover as i coach it i've been we've been using it for years on and off i think sometimes it it really helps us sort of retrain and like reset how we talk with each other about these things when we don't do them we're not having as good of conversations. And I think what happens is once we start doing them again, our conversations get good, they get more frequent and we don't need it as much. And then we get back into bad habits and then we gotta you know, bring it back again and make it like almost kind of businessy where we break out our computer, we both have our schedule in front of us, both have our agenda. But here's more specifically why I think, three reasons why I think it really matters. So one, is it, it's a lower emotion and you can prepare for emotion to come up. A lot of, I ask almost every single one of the people that come to my goals consults, how often are you having a talk with your partner that's reactive about a problem that occurred in between the two of you? And versus like, how, how often is it planned? And they're like, never. We're never having planned conversations. So the goal there is to talk about these things iteratively and I know I'm going to keep saying that word. I'll try not to repeat myself too much. But when you're not reacting to it and you're being proactive about it, you're able to have a much more calm conversation. And so I'm in sales and I I have 350 accounts that are already with us. Sometimes prices go up. Sometimes I know a bunch of emails get sent out saying the price is going up. And I know I'm going to get back either a couple of emails, I might get a phone call or two. Sometimes that phone call come in and I'll I'll say, hey, sorry, missed your call. Please book time on my calendar. Part of the reason is one, I'm not gonna be as useful of an account representative if I'm being defensive and reactive. If they schedule time on my calendar, I can prepare for it. I can give them options. I'm gonna be less emotional about it because I'm prepared for the emotions that are com- gonna come up. I know it's gonna be a not necessarily fun conversation, but I can at least be prepared for it. So I think, I work a lot more skillfully in a business setting. And when we're with our romantic or you know, our partners, we need to probably be a little bit less animated to get things done. And so that's the first one is that they're gonna be lower motion. You can prepare for the emotions. Number two is iterative approach um, also helps decrease emotions. So I know that early in our relationship, so Alyssa and I have been separated before for about uh, three months. I was adding a ton of mental load to her. And one of the things that kept coming up was an upset would happen, she would share with me the problem that occurred and she would really feel like she needed to crank up, dial up the emotion for me to really get it. I kept, I would change for three weeks and then fourth week back to normal. And so every time it would come up, she would really feel like, I don't know how to get through to you, I'm so frustrated and like pours her heart out. And you know, it's gonna come out angry sometimes. And so, when you're having an iter- an iterative approach, each time you can give yourself a little bit more permission for you and your partner to fail because you know that you have the safety net of next week to talk about it versus when we, we were having those conversations years ago, 
there was no next meme. There was no next talk about it. So it had to work that time. There was no opportunity to fail. But iterative, hey, if we screw it up this week, even this Friday thing, it'll come up this Friday when our when our parents come over to help out. We can come back the following Monday and say, did it work? Were there flaws in it? Do we need to make an adjustment? And so that first conversation, she's not going to, like it, whoever is the more frustrated person is not going to feel like they need to crank up the emotion to get the message through because they know they have another at-bat shot at it. The third one is that I think it's good, one, for operations and schedules, but it's also good for emotions. And I know that there have been a lot of women that I've seen in the hundreds of thousands of comments I've read now in the past couple of years that are saying one of the hard parts is whenever something emotional comes up, like something tough that needs to get, hey, I didn't like how you handled that conversation. Hey, I didn't like how we talked the other night. And I want to talk about that. A lot of times women are bringing that to men typically because I think society sort of trained them to have a better emotional intelligence than men. And so because they're bringing that up all the time, it starts to weigh more heavily on them. So that is another place that we can be using the boring meeting is a place to have some of those repairs and those heavier more emotional conversations where we need to apologize, we need to take accountability, we need to take responsibility for moments. And so that's where I really invite people that, especially for guys, if you know you are avoiding conflict all the time, use that as an opportunity to bring up something that's emotional that might be really hard for you. Those are my th- main three reasons. I'm sure there are more. You know, I took about 10 minutes to really try to write down some bullet points here, but I think these are some of the great ones. I'm curious, what are you guys doing in your boring meetings? What do you call it? I'm curious if there's other names. Let me know in the comments what other questions you have about it. I'd be happy to make a follow-up video. You can probably start to expect me seeing at least weekly videos about the things that I coach on, the places that I coach from, the Fair Play book. The Fair Play book, you can get the link below. Uh, If you want to book a call and you're interested in working with coaching for me, I have men's programs. I'm going to be going full time on this uh, in the not so distant future. Uh, This is December 19th right now. So look forward to meeting one or two of you maybe. And I look forward to hearing the comments. Thank you and uh, stay weird.